Mall of America. For more than 30 years, it has been a retail leader and an international destination, and it remains the largest mall in the U.S. Not to mention it welcomes millions of guests from around the world. It's huge, but it's also so much more. In this podcast, you're going to hear the real stories of how it started and why it continues to thrive. You'll hear about challenges we faced along the way and what you can learn from them. We will feature guests and experts from all walks of life and business. And along the way, you'll laugh, learn, and maybe even change the way you look at things. So if you're a fan of the mall, a brand new visitor, an entrepreneur, or a dreamer, prepare to dive deep into so much more. This podcast is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Hello, and welcome to this episode of So Much More, a Mall of America podcast. I am Dan Jasper, your host for today's show, and I'm here with two very special guests to talk about a very important topic, and they are both veterans who have served our country. Uh, The event is coming up on June 13th through the 15th here at Mall of America. It is the Vietnam War 50th Anniversary Commemoration Event. Uh, My first guest, Tom Lyons, served in the United States Air Force in Vietnam, and he is joined by the Minnesota Department of Veteran Affairs Commissioner, Brad Lindsay, who's also a veteran, and the MDVA assists the state's more than 294,000 veterans and their families throughout the state of Minnesota. The event at the mall will highlight the service of the United States Armed Forces during the Vietnam War, recognize the crucial contributions and deep sacrifices made by the allies of the United States during the Vietnam War, and provide an opportunity for healing, thanking, and honoring Minnesota Vietnam veterans in whatever branch or capacity that they served. With that introduction, uh, Tom, Brad, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate you having us here. Yep. Thanks for having us out. And I'm going to start, if you would very briefly give a little bit of your background as veterans. I'm going to start with Brad first, if you don't mind, a brief history of what brought you to this point. Sure, absolutely. So uh, as you said, I'm the commissioner of Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, I've served with the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, I always say off and on, since 1999. I started with them. Uh, but I left for a, uh, a brief period uh, of six years when I was the Olmstead County Veteran Service Officers, so still working in the same field. Uh, I'm a veteran of the regular Army and the Army Reserve. Uh, my last service was 2003, 2004. I actually served in uh, Iraq during uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom 1, um, but my service goes back to 1988, uh, where I also served in uh, operations uh, in Panama uh, back in 1990. So, Wow. Uh, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for your service. We appreciate it so much. Thank you. Tom, uh, you have a unique perspective on today's uh, topic. Would you give us your background, please? Well, as a Vietnam veteran, uh, I'll make a few comments about that. But first, uh, I, I'm a business owner. I own yeah. a mergers and acquisitions advisory firm. been doing that uh, ever since I got back from Vietnam. Uh, and I spend about half my time doing volunteer work, including uh, 14 years of Minnesota Military Radio and 15 years of raising money to help Minnesota military families via the Minnesota Military Family Foundation, which Mall of America supports our golf tournament every year. Yes. But as a Vietnam veteran, uh, when this event came up, uh, uh, they called me up from the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs and told me about it. And uh, it seemed natural to say, okay, I'll volunteer to be the MC, and, and we'll bring the military radio show out here and do it. Uh, for your listeners, uh, my grandchildren tell me they don't teach too much about Vietnam, but yep. uh, when we were in Vietnam, I think the country was suffering from a hangover from World War II in Korea, uh, and the population was, the citizens of the United States were just tired of war. Yeah. And so as a consequence, I think they treated the Vietnam veterans uh, poorly, uh, uh, worse than any other uh, veterans that we're aware of. And as a group, collectively, uh, we've made it our business to say never again. Mm-hmm. We're going to support our troops. We're going to support their families. And, and I think we've done that. As far as Vietnam is concerned, I served in the United States Air Force. Uh, I served at Cameron Bay, Vietnam. And uh, we closed that base on May 15, 1972, I was one of the last men to, to leave the base because in my section, I was the only one that was single. So I said, okay, I'll stick around <laughs> till the last day. So we were combat lifted out along with 300 security police. And and uh, it was a little dicey the last yep. few weeks. Uh, slept in the vault at the, at the finance wow. office. Okay. Safest place in, in the place. And uh, 
as a result of my volunteerism in staying to be the last one, I got to come home from Vietnam about six weeks early. Okay. And so I've been kind of volunteering ever since. But uh, it was it was the homecoming was not nice. Uh, we lived through it. We got over it. And so the idea for this event uh, to thank the Vietnam veterans, to welcome them home, and to show them resources where they can get help from various problems that we've found out since have been caused by Agent Orange is pretty important. We think that even the veterans that come uh, next week, uh, uh, whether they've filed for any disability or not, they're probably eligible to, for more because the Congress passed a thing called the PACT Act uh, about a year and a half ago that uh, extends uh, benefits to a greater number of, of uh, diseases. And so for those veterans that are coming next week, We'll have some folks here that can talk to them about uh, claims and talk to them about how they can get some uh, medical care out at the Minneapolis VA, which uh, Commissioner is one of the best VAs in the country. I think it's rated number five the last six years. I get my care out there. They do a phenomenal job. So this should be interesting. I hope a lot of (laughs) Vietnam veterans show up next week. And if they do, there's a lot of resources going to be available here. And we can not only say thank you, but we can help them with the various issues they may have. So kind of following up on that, first I have to say when, when we just met a few minutes ago, uh, I, I met you previously, um, I had to joke that if he needed any tips, if, if Tom needed any tips on, on radio interviews, that I'd be willing to help because he's been doing this forever. And, uh, and he was so kind to say that I ranked really high in his list of past guests as I worked. That's my memory anyway. <laughs> That's what I think. You did a real good job. <laughs> Um, Commissioner, if yes. you would go a little deeper into a why this event came about, what what the impetus, the the idea behind it was, uh, and dive a little deeper into what guest mm-hmm. coming, and it's for people even beyond Vietnam veterans, correct? Yes, there are I, elements for the public. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, it, it basically all started back. President Obama uh, created uh, an official commemoration uh, committee for the Vietnam. War 50th anniversary. Um, So that uh, commemoration period ends in November of 2025. So it's kind of a rolling uh, event. It goes over 13 years. Uh, I think Vietnam maybe is a little different than, say, today's D-Day. You know, that's a hard 80th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Vietnam didn't have quite as many of those, those pivotal events that you can tie a date to. So it is more of a rolling event, but uh, um, that was the impetus for it. Um, The uh, governor came to my predecessor uh, about three years ago and said, you know, the the U.S. Vietnam War commemoration is going on. I think we need to do something in Minnesota as well. And of course, you know, Governor Walls is a a veteran himself, a retired Sergeant Major. so we went forward with that, and we asked the legislature for some funding to be able to do this. We got it during uh, the last session uh, in 2023, and uh, we've been planning and putting this together ever since with our partners. But, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's not just for the Vietnam veterans. Uh, as Tom said, with, with things like the PACT Act, uh, a lot of veterans' benefits and services and the laws related to them – have really changed in the last few years. So, you know, I've been I've been telling folks, you know, you might have went in to see your county veteran service officer in 1975, 1995, 2005, whatever it was, and what you may have learned or been told then is not the case today. Uh, things have changed. So it's a it's a good opportunity for uh, veterans to come come to our resource center. Uh, learn about some of the new things that are available to them and also their families. You know, a lot of our Vietnam veterans are at least in their 70s generally. And so uh, some have passed. Uh, They may have passed from things that were related to some of these toxic exposures like Agent Orange and things like that. And their families uh, uh, are potentially eligible for benefits because of that as well. So good to have them here. Um, but also, yeah, like you said, general public, um, just to teach, uh, what is lacking, I would say in school. Um, you know, I graduated in 1988, so Vietnam ending was still fairly fresh. Um, but I I don't think we covered anything about the Vietnam war when I was in high school. So anything we can do to educate, um, you know, we're also including our allies in this uh, commemoration. You know, um, many of our Southeast Asian allies, 
uh, moved to Minnesota or immigrated to Minnesota after the war or years after the war even and, and made Minnesota their home. So they're definitely part of this as well, and we welcome them to join us also. I appreciate you bringing that up. I mean, that is, we have a large Hmong population, and, and part of that immigration started following the war, correct? Correct. Yes, we have the, we have the Hmong who were in special guerrilla units. We have Royal Lao Armed yep. Forces uh, that made their home here. And we also had those who were members of the Army Republic of Vietnam, the yep. South Vietnamese Army, yep. uh, who also came here after the war. That's important. Thank you. Tom, you, you brought up something earlier I'd, I'd love to just cover a little bit more, which was um, oftentimes Vietnam is considered uh, the forgotten war, perhaps, or because veterans were not welcomed back. It was a really challenging time politically within the United States. And, um, and we've seen different waves of veterans returning from different uh, wars um, be treated at different levels, right? But this was really challenging. And uh, regardless of someone's political views, these are still men and women that sacrificed a lot, right, to provide service to the United States. Can you talk a little bit about why it's important to take this opportunity to help to honor them? Well, I think being a Vietnam veteran, it's it's I, I agreed to help and participate, and I think it's a great event, but it isn't, it isn't something we would have asked for. Yes. Uh, but, it, but I think that's a reaction to the times. Yeah. When we were in Vietnam, uh, we'd get the Pacific Press and the, in, the, in the military newspapers, and all we read about was anti-war riots and, and body counts and things going on back in the United States. And, and when we came back, we had heard and seen so many terrible things that all we really wanted to do was get out of uniform, grow our hair out back when I could still grow hair and, and, and blend in with the population. And, and it just was a, it was a, a real strange time in the United States of America. And, and it was a bad enough experience, as I said, that uh, most of us wanted to pull together in one way or another and make sure it didn't happen again. Yep. And I think we've been largely successful with that. But it, it was just a different time. And it, and it was, you know, we, we were over there. I volunteered to go in because I wanted to earn the GI Bill and go to college. Sure. There was a draft then. Yes, so there most was. of the guys were drafted and sent over there. So it was, it was a tough time. Uh, we all went over there. We all did our duty. Uh, no matter what your job was, you know, as Patton used to say in World War II, your Army's only as good as its weakest link. But everybody, my recollection is everybody that was there were doing their jobs, whether they wanted to or not protecting each other and trying to get home safe. And and that's what uh, troops do whenever they go to war. Your time, my time, World War II, today is D-Day, and, and we're honoring all of those. Can you imagine being in a landing craft and going up to Omaha Beach knowing that, that uh, the Germans got their, their weapons uh, trained on you, and as soon as you open up that gate, you've got to go attack? No. Those young men did it knowing full well that they might not come home. We did it in Vietnam. We did our jobs. Uh, and a lot of us were support. I wasn't a combat veteran, but, you know, there were rockets going off and zappers, and it wasn't a safe place. So we were glad to get back to what we call the world, which is the United States. And I think we were so happy to get back and get back alive that uh, we were willing to just blend in. And I would say for, you know, 20 years or so, I didn't do a whole lot as far as Vietnam veteran member of the association, but I joined the VFW. You know, I walked in there one night and the World War II guys got a hold of me and they signed me up and made me in charge of the picnic, <laughs> got me drunk and sent me home in a cab. So, and those were my buddies till they died. I love so, it. So we participated, but we weren't very vocal. Fortunately, the Vietnam veterans have been fighting for benefits related to Agent Orange which is a herbicide that affected anybody that was on the ground. And, of course, Brad, you can attest to this. If you're in the Army, if you're in the service, if one part per gallon works well to kill off the, the foliage, add let's put 20 more. parts per gallon add in more. there. Let's really do it. Full stream. And nobody <laughs> knew. We didn't know. I, I'm, I have all kinds of issues, uh, type 2 diabetes, other things. That's why I stay busy. I don't worry about them. But, you know, I'm not mad. Yeah. I'm disappointed that we didn't know better. Yeah. But nobody knew. And now, after all these years with the PACT Act, there are about 30-some diseases that are called presumptive diseases because they're presumed to have been caused by exposure to Agent Orange on the ground in Vietnam or brown water, blue water, Navy. So the countries come around, but you'll find the Vietnam veterans are fighting now because 
burn pits are the, are the issue for his generation, and we don't want them to have to wait 50 years. And and everywhere you go, everywhere we send our troops, there's danger. There's there's whether it's burning oil wells, whether it's burn pits, whether it's Agent Orange. If we're going to send them there and they're going to risk their lives to go do their job, we got to take care of them when they come back. We need and, to take care of and them. And I think we've made great strides in doing that, and I hope it continues. I agree. Thank you for that. Um, Brad, the um, Mall of America. Okay. This, you wouldn't think of this as the natural setting <laughs> as a place to commemorate uh, the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, right? We have water skiing squirrels. Right. We have Cirque du Soleil. We have sumo wrestlers. So you don't naturally think of this, but when we were first approached by the organization, we wanted to get involved because uh, we offer something that I think a lot of platforms can't offer, which is a lot of people mm -hmm. that, Brad, that will interact. Brad takes care of a lot of Vietnam veterans at yep. the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Right. Right. So, I mean, this is, it may not seem like a great location for this event, but really it is because a lot of people come in this building can you talk more specifically about some of the events that our guests will see? Uh, first of all, veterans talk a little bit of the resource fair. I know that mm -hmm. there's a movie showing in our movie theaters. Yep. I know that there are uh, historical displays. Can you share a little bit like of that with our audience so they know what they'll see when they come and visit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mall of America, uh, I, at first, uh, uh, I, when it was decided, I was thinking, that's a little different. But then, yeah, you think about it, you we have no worry about the weather. Um, in the past, all of these events have occurred up on the state capitol grounds. Um, we have to worry about the weather. We have to worry about parking, which is kind of difficult in that area. So we come to a place that, yeah, weather doesn't affect us and parking is not an issue. We can pull in buses bringing veterans in. We have good handicap access. And uh, no matter what, we're going to hold this event and get as many vets as we can. But, uh, yeah, so like we said, it's the 13th to the 15th. That whole time we'll be, be running a resource fair where we will have uh, VA resources, uh, resources from the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs, our partners, our veteran service organizations. Um, we're also going to have folks that are up there uh, working on oral history. Um, so a big piece of this uh, uh, for the public is capturing uh, the history of some of these veterans and what they did in the service and what the U.S. did through them in Vietnam that, as I said, they're aging and um, in, in however many years we're not going to have them. Uh, it's going to be like the World War II generation or the World War I generation who, who we no longer have at all. So gathering that, capturing it for posterity and, and keeping those recordings forever uh, so people can use them for research and to celebrate this generation in the future as well. Uh, as you said, we're also going to have historical displays from the Minnesota Military and Veterans Museum. Uh, we are going to have a traveling tribute wall. So uh, a miniature version of the wall in Vietnam is going to be set up here. Uh, and that's uh, going to be here the whole time for folks to visit and, and look at the names. And, you know, that really shows the true impact of that war. Um, you know, there's 58,000 plus names on that wall. And to walk around, if you've ever been to D.C., to walk around and have a look at that. Uh, we're going to replicate that uh, to some degree here as well. Um, yes, uh, documentaries up in the theater area we're going to be showing on the Vietnam War. Um, you know, I, I, I've said in, in uh, uh, weeks, the, the past few weeks, our hope is we're, we're going to take over the Mall of America that day. I love it. <laughs> we're going to take and, it over. And you're welcome to. <laughs> we, we, we love it. We, we hope that there are thousands and thousands of guests, veterans, their families, their children, and, uh, and just guess to learn more about the veterans who served. Um, most of the activations that are taking place at Mall of America on June 13th through the 15th are located in the atrium area of the mall, which is the north side, the north entrance area. So for guests that have been here before, if you park in the large surface lot next to Ikea and look at the mall, walk in that door by the big star, and you're going to find almost everything that you want to find for this event. So it's easy parking, easy access. They can Find more information at minnesotaveteran.org slash Vietnam50 or go to mallofamerica.com to find out more information on all of these events. Tom. 
If I might just add, uh, Brad brought it up, the American Veterans Traveling Tribute Wall. It's a miniature version of the of the Vietnam Wall. If you've been to out to Washington, D.C., they've got a World War II memorial. Uh, I've gone out there for honor flights, and the World War II guys are in there, and they're remembering their buddies, and everybody else is just quietly walking by. And you go over by the Korean memorial, which is incredible, especially at night, and, and, it's, and it's moving, but you... You walk by quietly, and, and you go over to the Vietnam Wall, and, and everybody's about 20 feet back walking by on the sidewalk. But there's there's some of us up there with our caps on and our dark glasses, and they're doing a rubbing. And, they're etching. And it's, yep. and it's, we're over there blubbering, and we're remembering the guys that we left behind, and we're touching their names, and we're remembering. And, and even the traveling tribute walls, when they're out there, you're going to see some some old Vietnam veterans that are up looking at a, a cer- certain part of that wall, and and they're just not they're not just looking; they're they're remembering their buddies that they left behind, and so this could be this could be an incredible week. I hope there's Vietnam veterans from all over the state come in. Uh, they're going to get resources. They're going to see that wall. Uh, they're going to have other than Vietnam veterans saying thank you for your service. Uh, I think it could be it could be a, a great event for them, and and I would encourage them to come in and, and just ask once again. I've got some issues. I've got diabetes. I've got one of these problems. Uh, there's going to be what's called a toxic exposure screening for Vietnam veterans, and that's not a blood test. Yep. You just sit down with someone from the VA, and they'll be here. And they're going to ask you some questions. Do you have diabetes? Do you have this issue? Do you have that issue? Tell me about your life. Tell me when you were there. And then if they think you're entitled to some benefits and to be able to go out to the VA Medical Center to get some care, then they'll set up a follow-up meeting for you. So uh, this is this is something that Vietnam veterans, I think, can and should take advantage of. I hope they come, even though most of them don't want to be bothered by an event like this and don't want... No, none of us are looking for uh, any exposure, any acknowledgement. That's long since passed. But I think this is a great opportunity in the state and the MDVA and the, and the mall. Um, wonderful opportunity to, to greet those Vietnam veterans and, and to help them with whatever they need. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, a little bit off topic, but I just had to point out, I, I know you're quite involved with Beyond the Yellow Ribbon, um, which is um, companies or organizations that strongly support military veterans. Uh, Mall of America has been a proud Beyond the Yellow Ribbon uh, company now for, well, more than a dozen years, I think. It's been a long time that we've been been active in that. And that's why we had you on the military radio that show. That is why we were that. there. Yep. That's why yep. I'm among your top guests, as I recall. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think I was in the top 10 ranking. Um, but, but I think the cool thing about Beyond the Yellow Ribbon, and which goes back to that, this is a special one-time three-day event, right? Mm-hmm. Um, But it's important that companies and the public in general um, support, I believe, I should put it that way, I believe it's important that we support our veterans every day in whatever way we can. And this is just a way to to commemorate uh, this specific war, but it's a daily occurrence. It's not a three-day occurrence. It's a daily occurrence. Brad, I don't know how many numbers you have there, but there were a couple hundred communities that are beyond the Yellow Ribbon communities, and I think like 80 companies have become Yellow Ribbon. And what that means is they pull together in their communities and, and in their companies to support the families of the troops that are deployed. Yes. And since uh, 9-11-2001, the Minnesota National Guard has deployed 25 or 30,000 troops and why they're gone, the Beyond Yellow Ribbon communities, they might go mow the lawn, they might shovel the snow, they might just bring over some cookies and have coffee with the remaining spouse, but they're they're there to help the families, it's a just like the Minnesota Military Family Foundation is. Yep. And so the idea was when those troops are deployed, they can they can focus on the mission, yep. get home safe, we got your back, we'll take care of your families where we're gone, and that's... Minnesota does it better than any other state. Brad, I'm, you know a lot about this. Absolutely. Uh, I agree. And, and, you know, at big pieces like you were talking about too, Dan, it, it's uh, those companies make a commitment too because they realize that uh, hiring veterans is a good practice. Uh, bringing them to work, you get uh, uh, an employee who's 
disciplined, who's worked as a team, member of a team, and uh, can get the job done. So yep. veterans make great employees. They do, and we can attest to that. Pretty easy to put in a good day's work. Nobody's shooting at you. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> we have we actually have a lot of veterans that work at Mall of America proudly, and, and we're, we're honored to have them. Uh, we're quickly running out of time, but for those who aren't able to come to Mall of America uh, June 13th through the 15th, there are other ways for them to watch or participate, correct? Can you share that? Yes, absolutely. So uh, to make it easier, I will first mention uh, uh, to get here, we have yes. worked with the Disabled American Veterans and the Minnesota Veterans for Veterans Trust Fund to set up buses and vans uh, in different communities across the state. I think there's about seven of them set up right now. And if there's communities that are looking to or would wish to set up, uh, there's funding for that as well. Um, but uh, if you go to minnesotaveteran.org slash Vietnam 50, uh, you'll find a list of buses and where the meeting points are and how to get connected with that as well. But also, yes, we'll be uh, running this as a, a, a live uh, um podcast, if you will, live streaming it on our website uh, uh, at minnesotaveteran.org slash Vietnam 50 as well. So um, it is another way to participate. You know, if you can't make the event and you're still looking for resources too, uh, Tom and I will always tell you uh, there's one in every county in this state. You have a county veteran service officer. And as I said earlier, if you haven't been in many years uh, uh, and are looking for assistance, you've had medical conditions, uh, it's good to check in with them and see what's available and see how things have changed as well. Wonderful. Thank you for that. We remember uh, Thursday at noon, we're going to record a live show, Minnesota Military Radio, right here. And then Friday, I volunteered to be the MC, so we're going to have a put on a pretty good show. And on Friday after the program, free chow for the Vietnam veterans. A nice lunch is going to be on, so I should have it. a good week next week. I love it. Check out the website for all the details, more information. Uh, Commissioner Lindsay, Tom, thank you both so much for joining me today. Thank you for helping to put on this really critical event, and we're honored to host it here at Mall of America. And thank you so much for your service to our country. We truly, truly appreciate it. And for all of our listeners to so much more, thank you for tuning in. Please go to the website, find out more about this event, but also find out more of all the support that is offered to our Vietnam veterans uh, so that you can be connected and, and we can all make this a stronger community together. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of So Much More. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you find your favorites, including Spotify, Apple, or Google Podcasts. And you can also watch a video cast on YouTube. Go to podcast.mallofamerica.com to leave a review, ask a question, or give us an idea for the show. Until next time, thanks for listening. So Much More is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau, the official destination marketing organization for the city of Bloomington, Minnesota. Before your next trip to Mall of America, visit bloomingtonmn.org for answers to all your travel questions, deals and packages for hotel stays, and so much more.